NordVPN is becoming more than just a VPN. Threat protection will guard your device against malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server at the time. Step up your cybersecurity and stay safe. Ready to hop in the 6 floor and cruise around the blocks. There's a storm coming to the underworld and the heat is on. Take over the blocks and call the shots. It's time to hustle or get hustled. What's it gonna be? Stay sharp. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Don't let them catch you slipping. Only real gangsters thrive in the dope wars world. Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, although not really about crypto in this video. And I should tell the truth because I cover crypto and politics. And the occasional human interest story, and this might be a human interest story, but with a <laughs> but with a nudge to politics. I'm joined by Alex Christopher from the Duran. Now, before I introduce him, uh, please subscribe. So is it bit.ly slash crypto rich odyssey? That's where you get most of my material. Bit.ly slash crypto rich three speak. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't come over to Odyssey because of YouTube censorship. Oh, by the way, you can also find me on Rumble, but I don't post everything on Rumble. Hey Alex, thank you so much for making yourself available. Thank you, Crypto. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, at last we speak, and I know we do these occasionally. And I'm very, very blessed and fortunate and grateful that once a month I get to record with Tom Luongo and your partner, yes. Alexander Mercurius. Yes. Really, yes. really great conversations. Yes, we got to get Tom back on the direct. Actually, I saw someone requesting him to come back on. Okay. We've done a couple of shows with Tom as well. I think like three yes. or four live streams, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what I appreciate is, actually, what I, I think... Uh, because we may be joined by Garland, I, Garland Nixon, I don't know, right? Uh, but what I appreciate about you and Alexander Mercurius and Tom Luongo and Garland, and even myself, is that we do have different perspectives on stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think you yeah. Know, every, lot, everyone has different perspectives. But, but we don't cancel each other. No, no, I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, I actually got this question the other day uh, about, you know, someone asked, do you and Alexander ever disagree? And I was just like, yeah, we do. But I mean, our show format is not a debate. It's, it's a yeah. conversation. Yeah. You no, know? I mean, if it was a debate, okay. But there's a lot of debate shows on on YouTube. I mean, a lot. It's, it's flooded with debate shows. Ours is, is a conversation. Yeah. A, very, civil, a civil, civilized conversation. Civilized conversation. Very, very smart analysis by Alexander Mercurius, who I don't know how many um, sources he pulls through every single day. And then you with your, <laughs> you with your incisive questions. And, do you know, at first... When I first started, discovered you and started listening to you, I thought, oh, it's all Alexander McCure, it's all Alexander McCure. And then I got, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's Alex Christoforo as well. Because you're the one who will ask the, the prescient questions and then offer your own analysis and it'll take it somewhere. Very, very small. And it's, it's a good conversation. It, it's a great conversation. Like we're having right now. So it's a good conversation. Yeah, and we that's, haven't that's interesting. Yeah, and we haven't even gone to it. I'll have all the links uh, below, locals.duran.com. You got your channel. Alexander Mercurius have his own channel. And then there's the Duran where you do videos jointly and you have a range of guests on your channel. And I was saying to you before we started recording that obviously you need to start up several more channels because <laughs> you don't have enough to do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's right. We need more. Yes. That's right. That's right. Just, I know. I hope you don't mind me saying this, right? But Alexander Mercurius does all the research and the analysis. I know you do some research and analysis, but you're the one that does the editing and the uploading and, and the setting it all up. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been quite a quite a journey, uh, quite a learning process. But I'm I'm very, I have to be honest. I'm very grateful that uh, I, I I I took on the. The, the tasks of editing and all that because it's really it's really opened up a whole new world for me okay. editing and camera and filming and even being outdoors i'm very it's very challenging filming outdoors but i'm also very thankful for that because it's it's opened my eyes up to to a whole different world How, you mean the world of editing and stuff <laughs> editing <laughs> filming everything audio everything i mean it's i've got a newfound respect for fit for editors uh people in graphic design and editing and film and audio production and film production and people that understand cameras and experts in these areas i mean it's it's just it's a never-ending genre and i mean people that know these things like really like are professionals in these i'm just like uh, i'm amazed now it's, it's how they how they know all of these things because i'm still very very much a novice but but it's such okay. an interesting space Okay. Well, what I wanted to talk to you about was um, how did it begin? You know, where, how did you and Alex meet? 
How did you start the Duran? What's the story of the Duran? Rather than sort of cover the sort of material that you guys uh, cover so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But as a, as a social worker, as a trained and qualified social worker, I thought I'd get into the human element. What's going on? With, what's going on with this? With these two? Um, we we met in two thousand like late 2016, early 2017. I'm not sure the, the exact date, but I was in Moscow um, on a potential potential business opportunity, business trip. Um, and Alexander was also in Moscow speaking with the same person about a potential business partnership, business trip. And we were, uh, we, we were taking the meeting. It happened, this guy scheduled us back to back, kind of, but he scheduled us at, at Park Korkava, Gorky Park. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Gorky Park with William Hurt. A very good movie. Old, old movie, but very good. Very good movie. Um, and, uh, you know, while this guy was was out, I think he was taking a phone call. or I, I don't know. He was just doing some other stuff. And uh, Alexander was there. I was there. We just started talking because he was Greek. I'm Greek. And we were like, oh, okay. We started talking about the politics in Greece. And that was it. And then about six months uh, my timeline is off. Maybe maybe six months to a year mm-hmm. later, um, I was approached by two other people to to start up a a blog, a news publication, and to write for it. Pretty much, it was just to, to write for it, to write articles, and, and help set up the blog because I I come from a tech uh, background, and so I was like, yeah, okay, that sounds cool. And this was also in uh, this was when I was living in Moscow then at the time. When I met Alexander, I was just visiting. Then I decided to live there for about a year. I was there. And, uh, and you know, we started talking. And, you know, these guys were like, yeah, we're going to get Alexander as well to, to be part of this. And he's going to write articles because he was, he was an established writer, journalist mm-hmm. writer, geopolitical journalist writer. And uh, that was the Duran. That, that was the, the blog was the Duran, the blog. But there was no media, no YouTube, nothing. And I didn't even know Alexander. To be quite honest, I know him. I, I never, I rarely talked to him. I was just writing articles, posts. He was writing articles, and that was pretty much the extent of, of so our interaction. What sort of stuff were you writing about? And what sort uh, of geopolitics, stuff? geopolitics. And he was also writing about geopolitics. Yeah, my stuff was more short form. Like I was more um, the day to day, just you know, day to day news, and he was more in depth analysis, like longer form in depth analysis. Which is a little bit like how your channels are, because yeah. your videos tend to be shorter, and you'll cover several items, do daily updates, and but he will go into depth into a particular yeah. issue. Okay, yeah. and then why? One of the things I've always wondered: if, so the website is the Duran dot com. Why yeah. the name the Duran? That's that's the only secret that I keep to myself, to be quite <laughs> honest. <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, I'm not. I'm sure I'm not the first person. It was yeah. It was a dot com. I will say this: it was a dot com domain that was available. And right. uh, my thinking, whenever I, back in my previous life, whenever I would create websites or do any type of uh, of web projects, tech projects, I always, I, I was always on the lookout for dot coms. To me, it was always if you're going to do something, make it a dot com, right? So <laughs> that was kind of one of the lines of thinking for the name. Okay, and I take it that's just a partial answer, right? Yeah, that's just a partial. But there's 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 nothing that's crazy about it, to be quite honest. The story, I just I don't know. I've just it's kind of stayed with me, and I just haven't divulged it to anyone yet. So I just figured, okay, I might as well just you know keep it keep it as my as my story, and maybe one day I'll I'll explain it. That air of mystique, yeah, yeah. like the secret formula to Coca Cola or EFT. Yeah, yeah. right? Believe me, it's not that. It's not that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not that sexy of a story or anything but you know <laughs> okay so so then when did you start doing the videos we did the videos um around like me and alexander mm. we dabbled around doing videos from the blog like just doing but it wasn't youtube it was more like facebook stuff mm. and every now and then you know the we, we would do like a video here and there and it would go on facebook and it's nothing nothing to write home about but I think like the end of 2000 or the summer of 2018, 19, I want to say, once again, my timeline is a little messed up. Um, you know, we were, uh, the, the blog wasn't this blog business, creating a, a publication, like a web publication was, 
was a silly idea. I mean, it was, you know, there's no, there's no future in it, to be quite honest. You know, mm-hmm. you write an article, you know, maybe you get a hundred people that read that article, and maybe you get like three or four comments and then that's it. There's no, you're not going to, you know, build a career on this unless you, you work for maybe a, a big, big, the daily mail.co.uk or something like that. Okay. There you can make a career of, of being a, a, a writer, you know, a news writer, but trying to do your own thing, you know, that was, it, it wasn't getting us anywhere. And so one day I just thought to myself, I was in Cyprus and I thought to myself, you know, let me try the video thing. And I did a couple of videos and one video did really well. And then I did another video and it did really, really well. Like and really this, well. This was just you right now, right? Just Talk me. About- yeah. Actually, I was in a coffee shop with my laptop and the camera and headphones. And that was it. And uh, I just stepped outside of the coffee shop onto the balcony, onto the terrace. I did a video about Putin and Soros. I remember it's still there. Yeah. It's got millions of views. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what went viral. I don't know what happened. But, uh, and I did some other videos and I was like, huh, I go, this is interesting. This is an interesting medium. I said, I know nothing about it, but it's interesting. And uh, I just took the initiative to speak with Alexander, someone who I really didn't know. Um, and I said, Alexander, would you be interested in perhaps doing a kind of interview, you know, news video thing? I said, and see if, if we like it, if you like it, if I like it. He says, sure. So, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it out. He says, this writing stuff's not going anywhere. Alexander's like, this writing stuff is not going anywhere. You know, he's like, I'm writing articles and no one's reading them. You know, it's like... <laughs> spending all this time researching and all this time putting together an article and he's structuring it and he's taking a week to put these amazing articles together. Yeah. Like amazing analysis, but you know, no one's really reading it except for, you know, some people who are in the, in our circle say they're like praising him. incredible analysis. Alexander. You know, but these are guys that are in our, our, our very you know, small circle of, of, of geopolitical, you know, intel- intellectuals. Um, we did it. It, there was chemistry. I mean, we got along and we just said, okay, let's, let's do this. And, uh, you know, that was, that was it. And we've just been doing it every day. We've been very consistent. I mean, I'm the type of person that when I, when I do something and I enjoy it, I am consistent as, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't stop. You're a mission, Alex. You're a yeah, mission. I, don't, I, I don't stop. Yeah. You're I mean, I'm, 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 I'm committed. I'm a very committed person. It's tough to get me to commit, but when I commit, um, my whole being is is in it. My whole being, right? That's it. Okay. And then I found you at some point when it was just you and Alex doing the Duran yes. videos with that channel. Yes. Um, and I, I just, I mean, I just want to say, you know, anybody's not watched mm-hmm. this, well, I can't imagine there's many people who are watching this and don't know about you and Alexander Mercurius, but the analysis is just spectacular. Just absolutely spectacular. And one of the things I, I appreciate, apart from the um, the chemistry between both of you and how your your questions deepen the inquiry and the analysis, and then he, you might s- offer something yourself that opens it up a bit more, is um, I do notice how Alexander Mercurius, his commentary is the kind of commentary there used to be, certainly in the serious media in the UK. Yes. You know, the, the situation happened in, to the UK. Yeah. Like the mainstream media, the Guardian, like say, OK, this is this is argument X. This is anti X. Right. And this is another pers- perspective on it. And this is what we think. You know, there, I mean, I'm just. Um, just for an example, Putin's annexation speech, which I listened to, and I looked at an article from Al Jazeera. Which was like, this is his speech, and here are some segments. Fine. And then you can pick and choose. No commentary, just bits that they picked out. And then there was the Guardian's analysis of it, which was awful, absolutely awful. It was like, this is the rantings of somebody who's deranged. He talked about this that had no basis or had no nothing like that. It's almost like what they're communicating is, don't bother to listen to him. We'll tell you what you need to think about it. We'll tell you everything. Yeah. And then and then be, the way that they dismissed it is like, well, nobody's going to l- want to listen to the rantings of a madman. And then it's always the West way that, you know, everybody who resists Western hegemony is a madman. They are unhinged and dangerous. 
propaganda. It's pure propaganda. Complete yeah. propaganda. And then what's great, bringing it back to you and Alexander, is that your analysis isn't that. Because I'm really conscious of the fact, I noticed that Alexander Mercurius says, this is my opinion. He'll separate his opinion from what's known facts. And where he speculates, he says, I'm speculating here. Yeah. And then for, it, it's funny because it's kind of like what I do as a child protection social worker. It's, I, I never see abuse happen, but I have to draw inference, inferences. And sometimes there isn't the definite evidence because there isn't a mark on a child, but I have to draw inferences from what everybody else is saying and how the child is behaving and stuff. So it's, I can't go around and say, no, he did it. He definitely, definitely did it. Unless I can actually back it up with independent, verifiable evidence. So I appreciate that, that, um, I suppose that intellectual honesty of the analysis, plus also you don't demean your listener, which I think the mainstream media does now. Yeah. You're too stupid to work it out for yourself. You know, you voted for Brexit. You must be really thick. We'll tell you. You know, the, the London Easter middle class Guardian Easter faction will tell you. Farage is a racist. Trump sent out mean tweets. We'll tell you. So. Yeah, it's the, no, I just want to say that it's it's I think you're spot on and and I think it's uh it's arrogant and demeaning that when the mainstream media does that because one thing that I've I've realized doing the videos and interacting with uh with with much with many of our viewers is that our viewers are are many times a lot more knowledgeable than we are and they actually add to our analysis you know you learn things by listening to people mm. and, and by and by taking in different opinions and, and listening to different experts in different areas you know we have people that listen to us who are engineers and who are uh, fluent in different languages or, or live in different areas or have expertise in in sciences or or diplomacy or a wide range of different areas so i mean they they add a lot more to our uh to our analysis military experts for example they add a lot to our analysis you know they kind of give us a different view of of what we're thinking, or or they sometimes confirm what we're what we're thinking. You know, sometimes they put us on the right path. Mm. You know, we're thinking, you know, yeah, is, is is Russia's military move? It looks like Russia's doing this or Ukraine's doing that. And then we'll get like a message from a viewer who says, "Okay, I served for for the UK military, and I'm telling you, this is what Russia's doing." And we're like, "Okay, we are on the right path. You know, we are seeing it correctly." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I suppose you have access to all these sort of contexts, formal and informal. Most of it's informal. Suppose, yeah, it yeah, informal. It's, it's so it's so informal. Yeah, it's it's the internet. It's you know emails and messaging boards and locals and you know um, I'm not on social media. I'm on V Contact. That's pretty much it. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, I, you know, it's it's different ways that you absorb the information. You know, it's yep. coming to you from all different angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then all the the guests that you have, like Garland, will put a particular spin on yeah. something. Tom Luongo will provide yeah. something. Else. Uh, um, Robert Barnes will provide some something yes. else and stuff, right? Exactly. And, uh, and then you get kind of, it all goes into the pot, into the analysis. Yeah, pot. you get it, you synthesize it, and, and you come up with what you hope is a, is an accurate picture, what you hope. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, then, so then carry on with the story of the Duran, right? So you've got the Duran.com, you've got your joint channel, you've got Alex Christoforu and, and Alexander Mercuris. Where's it all going to end? When's Channel 4 and 5? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's going to be no, no 4 or 5. <laughs> the only goal that I have right now, me, as, as Alex, as part of the Durant Alex, is I would just like to travel more to show more cities. Right. That okay. I would like to do. That, would, well, that I, I would like to do. We just I've, I've said this to you off camera, right? I'm not going to say on camera, so it'll be recorded. But when you make it to London, you let me know beforehand. Yeah. That, because the restrictions are gone, right? And we'll go. I know. Out yeah. of hurry. London's <laughs> right. on my on my list. I've got so many countries that are on my list that I want to get to, and um, I just haven't just haven't had the the opening. Like I haven't had my mind clear either to to say, okay, now things are, are are a little bit in a lull. Things are quieting down just a little bit. You know, a week or two. So now I can start to to plan like five or six different countries that I'm going to uh, to go to. Okay, and of course you'll want to come to London because you want to meet up with Alexander Mercurius. I know you met him in Greece a few uh, yeah. couple of months ago. So great those videos you did together. Yeah, I would love to to go back. I used to go to London so often, um, and then and then the, and then everything hit, you know. And it kind of threw, kind of throws you off, you know. 
Mm. That two-year period kind of throws your whole groove off where you're saying, okay, I go to London often and I visit Spain a bunch and I like going to these places. And then you get that two-year thing and you're just kind of like, you know, how do I get back in the groove after uh, after what happened? Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Well, you can come back into the groove in London, the yeah. London right? Soon. Okay. Now, I want to do a little bit of political analysis because yes. something big did happen today, yeah. uh, which was the, the bombing of the bridge that connects Crimea with Russia. And I've only seen headlines, I just, and I saw a brief article in Zero Hedge about it, but it happened uh, much, much, about 12 hours ago, or maybe a bit longer. And 6 a.m. Now, local time. 6 a.m. local time, right? So it would have been, it would have been nighttime. It would have been 4 a.m. UK time, right? Um, so I, I didn't even know what to ask you about it, but now what, Alex? I mean, now, <laughs> now what? what? Well, the bridge is open again. Yep. The bridge is open. It's got, from what I understand, it's reverse. The uh, vehicles are, are moving in a reverse direction, but there are uh, there is civilian traffic. So there are cars that are crossing the bridge, but I think it's one lane in a reverse direction. And the, the train is working because it had a, a railway, a railway line. Now, that was the important part as far as um, getting supplies from Russia to Crimea. The, port, the important part was rail, the rail access. That's that was opened at eight eight p.m. local time. So from six a.m. when it happened to eight p.m., they got the rail uh, back and running as well. So um, the damage, from what I understand, was more on the on the car infrastructure than the rail infrastructure. From what I understand, um, but you know, this is a this is a big big ex- escalation. Mm. If you want my opinion, this is a big escalation. No, well, it's, it's a very a, symbolic attack as well. Yeah, it's an assault on Russian territory. Well, yeah, it's an assault on Russian territory, and you're and you're you're attacking the the symbol of what connects Russia to Crimea. You know, that's that's this is the symbolic bridge, the connection of these two uh, areas. Yeah, and it's civilian in- infrastructure as well. It's which civilian is, infrastructure is a violation of international law. Not that any of the warmongering nations in the West care about that, because in because Yemen, you know, Britain and the U.S. provided uh, logistics and weapons and intelligence for the Saudis to destroy hospitals and schools in Yemen, and we know what the U.S. have done in Iraq and Libya, reduced Iraq and Libya. And I like to comment, being Pakistani, that Barack Obama dropped more drones more bombs on Pakistan in this first 100 days of office than George Bush did in eight years. And the U.S. wasn't at war with Pakistan officially. And then, of course, there's the um, Afghanistan, all the wedding parties that were killed. So for the West to do this, it's no big deal. We're always dropping civilian infra- bombing civilian infrastructure. Well, I remember Barack Obama, didn't he, didn't he make a comment when he was president, something along the lines of, I wake up and the first thing I do in the morning is I sign my drone kill list or something, oh, yeah, something like that. I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm getting the, the quote no, it was right. A kill list. It something, was a kill. He said something like that. You know, yeah. and, then he, and then he had the statement, something like we bombed some folks. Yeah, I, I forgot the context of it, oh. to be quite honest. But yeah, he was always saying stuff. Like, you know, but he, he, did, he didn't send folks. mean tweets, though, Alex. Yeah, exactly. He didn't, he he didn't, didn't send mean tweets. Yeah. Handsome, articulate, smooth, venal. Because one of the things that I don't know if people know, I'm sure you know this, right, that he ordered the execution of four American citizens without habeas corpus, including a 16 year old. That was on the kill list. Yep. Go drop a bomb on this 16 year old kid who's an American citizen without, you know, without being found guilty of any crime. He he was a horrible, horrible president. It was smooth talking assassin. So but no mean tweet, eh? That is the worst crime of all. No mean tweets. He hung out with Hollywood guys. He hung out. He played basketball with George Clooney, and he went on the talk shows, and that was all cool. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But you know, you, you know what it is. Uh, the, I, I believe it is a verse. I'm not sure if it is a verse. I believe it is a, a verse in the Bible. I'm not sure, but it, it's something along the lines of, you know, what you. You know the violence that you that you give out is is the violence that eventually come, comes back, right? Y- you know, something something like that. Buddhist, Buddhist yeah. karma as well. Yeah, exactly. Like a karma, karma type of thing. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a karma type of thing where, you know, after a while, all of this this violence that you're exporting, eventually, it's, you know, that's it comes back home. Yeah, and then in contrast to Putin, 
because Russia hasn't done anything. They, they, you know, it's the, we got these four regions that are now that have voted to join the Federation, Russian Federation. They're now part of the Russian Federation. And I've not heard anything about the votes being um, corrupted. You know, like I, I've not come across anything like that. Well, I think the Collective West says it's a sham referendum. I mean, trust. But but I mean you know in terms of sometimes that happens in uh, certain third world countries or whatever right where yeah. I know it's happened in Pakistan in elections where people are bribed to vote a particular oh, yeah. way right yeah. nothing I've not heard any noise like that about these referenda that they were they were fair and people got to vote in private and that was it and they voted to join Russia why wouldn't you because the Ukrainians have been bombing us for eight years why would we want to be with them the, 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 the Ukrainians unleashed hell on the Russian speakers. Yeah, in in Ukraine, an eight year hell. That, that's the truth. They, you know, it was so bad for for them, and and they're always lecturing everybody about inclusivity and and diversity and and all of these things. While Ukraine was was barring people from speaking their language, the Russian language. I mean, you know, in the east of Ukraine, you weren't allowed to even to even utter a word in Russian. Otherwise, you were fined or arrested or God knows what. If you were working at a restaurant, you were not allowed. To speak Russian, even though that it that was their language. Mm. I mean, it, it, you know, they 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 censored Russian media. They censored Russian political parties. They broke away from uh, the, the the Russian Orthodox Church. I mean, it, and then of course you had the bombing, the constant bombing for eight years. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a it's a hatred of a of a culture. Yep, yep. And here we go. I was talking to a friend of mine in the summer and stuff who was. Um, I consider a sort of metrocentric, centric London Guardian Easter sort of guy, and uh, and I said to him, I said, I've never known, when it comes to a war, that the West has been on the right side of history. Iraq, Libya, uh, Serbia. Yeah, the recent, Africa, the recent, yeah, the recent, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's not happened. It's not happened. Certainly, since all the time I've been interested in politics, since I've been an adult, Ser- all my adult yeah. love. Ser- Serbia was was one of the game changers. For me, Iraq won, and, and and Serbia. Those two, those two conflicts were the game changer. Because in Iraq won, and in Serbia, that's where you really saw the manipulation and the propaganda. You know, um, the, the the little girl testifying, saying they were taking the babies out of incubators and they were throwing them on the cold, you know, floor. I mean, that that testimony for Iraq won. I mean, that's that's where you were like, you know, crap. This is they're they're really working the soft media power now, and it worked. And it worked. And then in Serbia, the same thing in Serbia. So, so Iraq, what do they do in Iraq? Iraq, they really perfected the demonization of, of one man. That's when they really started to, to say, huh, you know, we could destroy a country. We can get people on board for the destruction of a country if we can just demonize an individual. And mm-hmm. that individual then represents the entire country. And, and everyone's hatred for that individual will carry over to the hatred of that country, at least the green light to invade that country. So that was Saddam. Serbia was where they really started to fine tune the demonization of a culture hmm. and a society, the Serbs. And I remember the, the testimonies from, from various uh, you know, White House uh, officials and congressional officials. The Serbs are to blame. The Serbs did it. The Serbs started this war. And Bill Clinton, I remember Bill Clinton's speech. He, I mean, he said it outright. The Serbs are the enemy. The Serbs are to blame. No one else is at fault. They are the bad guy, the Serbs. So those two conflicts is where they really, and, and now they've merged them. You know, now they've, they've gotten the perfection of the hatred of a, of a culture, along with, with getting everyone's focus on that one person, whether it's Qaddafi or Assad or Putin, or tomorrow it could be MBS, Saudi Arabia. And, and yesterday, yesterday, metaphorically speaking, it was the Muslims. And the Taliban and Saddam Hussein and, and Taliban, Muhammad Gaddafi. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um and and then in contrast, there's Putin. Putin, that genocidal maniac who's actually, as far as I know, not actually carried out any genocide anywhere. <laughs> the, 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 the big complaint that that you know Russian society has with Putin is is that he's he's not uh hard enough. With, with the war that he's conducted or the special military operation. You know, they're like, they're saying, you know, enough, enough. The West is fighting us, NATO. I mean, they understand this is a war with NATO. They're saying NATO is, 
is throwing everything they have at us. And we're fighting with both hands tied behind our back. But, you know, Putin, Putin did not want to destroy Ukraine. And he doesn't want to destroy Ukraine. It's obvious. That's yep. not what he wants. Yep. And I just want to reference, uh, you know, there's how what you were saying about the Ukrainians banning, making the Russian language illegal and discriminating against Russians and all things Russian. And just the other day, Putin was in a school or to addressing teachers in these new regions, talking about the val valuing Ukrainian culture. Yes. I, mean, I, I got to yes. say, as a, gen as, as a genocidal maniac, he's, he's not doing very well. He scores pretty low. <laughs> well, yeah, he scores, he scores very low. He's in negative numbers. But you know what? It's, it, it's smart thinking. Because if you're incorporating uh, territories into the Russian Federation, um, you know, you, you don't want to build uh, a society on hate, which is what they did with the West of Ukraine over the past God knows how many decades. You know, the Ukrainian identity that the U.S. was building over the past 10, 20 years was an identity that was anchored in one thing, the hatred of Russians. That mm. was what bound the people together. When, when, you know, the, the, they could have picked so many positives to create a, a Ukrainian identity or Ukrainian culture, but, but the, the West, the collective West, they wanted the powers that be to focus in on the hatred of Russia. How are we going to build a culture? We're going to build it on the hatred of these people. Hatred and of they the did people. it. Right. Which yeah, is and you can't, you can't build a society on that. You know, you have to respect the culture, respect the language, and, and, and try to get people, like what Putin was saying with the teachers, try to have them understand that your language, your history, your culture is welcome here. Welcome which, here. Which, uh, which points to the diversity of cultures and ethnicities and religions within Russia. Because you've got, you got the, I, I don't know, I don't know all the groups, right? But the Inuit over on the Far East, you've got the Chinese type Russians, right? In, in Chechens. Chinese or whatever, the Chechen. Yeah. yeah, you've got the, the Muslims in the southern, southwestern part as well. Not, not the Chechens. Yeah. Tatars, yeah. Yeah, and then the um, Eastern Orthodox Christians, yeah. for most of it, right? So it's a massive, massive country with an incredible diversity of peoples that, as far as I, do, I know, I don't know much about Russian history, didn't commit genocide on their own people, on those but, that were there, like the Americans did. Well, the, 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 the Soviets, the, 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 the communist regime, yes, that was bad. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they that did. was bad. That was yeah. bad. That was a, a, a horrific hard time. But, you know, it was that 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 was an ideology that wanted to to wipe away religion and, and, and culture. I mean, that was that was their ideology. Oh, like the Great Reset now, like the WEF now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, their ideology was, you know, you're not going to be any you're going to be this blank slate number. You know, cog in the machine. You will own nothing. You will own nothing and be happy. <laughs> that was that's that's the promise. It's that's always the promise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not only you will own nothing, you will be nothing. <laughs> you will yes. be nothing. Well, let me take it back to Putin again, right? So there hasn't been there hasn't been a reaction to the continued attacks on these on Donetsk and Lugansk regions. Well, the, Donetsk is a city. I keep confusing them, but on these regions, right, yeah. in the formerly Western Ukraine, Eastern Ukraine, they haven't they've, they've continued with the attacks and the killings and the murder of civilians. And the bombing of civilian infrastructure, which doesn't make the Western media, but you can find it in, I suppose, in Russia media for sure, and also independent media, which is my preference to go to. Um, and then he he's not acted rashly. And if I think about how the Russians operated in Syria, they didn't act rashly there either. And Putin didn't. And and in the discussion that you had with Alexander, on uh, I think. Friday's video, or maybe the one today, it was a shorter video where you were talking about how come they haven't reacted. It's just very, very quiet. And then Alexander Mercurius suggested that it show it could display, and the Russians are just very confident. They know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then I was started thinking something, and this is so off the wall, right? But it, I suppose it's my own spin on it. I don't know much about Putin's childhood or his history or anything. But he is, he does seem to me he's very measured. He's very smart. 
he must have had a good childhood as far as I can tell. <laughs> unlike unlike Saddam Hussein, right? <laughs> Who was brutalized by his father, yeah. physically abused by his father, and then like then physically abusing all of Iraq. But but there's there's a thing in um in social work with child development called impulse control. I don't know if you know about the Stanford experiment. Yeah. Well, they, you take you take these toddlers. They took these toddlers, and they gave them um, like a cookie or some sweets and stuff, right? And said, "Okay, if you, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave you at the table with these sweets. Don't touch them until I come back, and then you can have extra if you don't touch them." And they filmed them, and the kids, little kids, are squirming, doing everything, sitting on their hands or crossing, not to reach out, right? And it's a test of impulse control. And it is the one of the strongest indicators for success in later on in life. That ability to restrain your impulses, to not act rashly. It certainly happened to me, Alex. I'm in an argument with somebody and I'm th- or with my wife. I'm like, don't say that. Don't say that. And boop, I said it. I said it. And it didn't help things. It just made stuff worse, right? And then if I contrast with how Americans have acted or the British or you know, the West have acted in war with just retaliation, retaliation, no impulse control, no opportunity to think and actually consider and play the long game. And I just wonder how, because I think you know more about Russian culture and history and society than I do, how that plays in, because that would be there for Russia. It's never been colonized. You know, it's, it's other than internal, internal colonization. But it's had that stability, that longevity, that sense of itself in the way that Iran has or Japan has, because they've never been colonized either. Anything you can is that useful to you? Is it? <laughs> no, I mean it's a, no. no the, the the Russian uh, culture is a civilizational culture, like Iran, for example. Like you said, Iran is just, these are you know civilizational cultures that go back hundreds, thousands of years, right? Um, but uh, you know the Putin's Putin's response is is um, it's hard to figure out. On the one hand. I have a really hard time figuring him out as to how he's going to respond. But on the other side, it's like we all kind of know that he's going to play the long game and be patient. You know, it's kind of, and and I think we have a hard time reconciling that because most of us would not act like him Mm. or or our first like impulse control. Our first impulse would be, oh my God, they took out the Kerch Bridge in Crimea. Well, we're going to take out, you know, their building over there. But He's quiet. He hasn't said anything. He's he's playing everything very close to to his chest with with regards to the plan. Um, some people have doubts. Some people say he has no idea what he's doing. That's why he's being so quiet. Other people say he's supremely confident. We don't know. We don't know. But I, I remember like Abraham Lincoln. I think he said that um, when people would anger him, he would write a letter and put out all of his anger, express all of his emotions and all his vitriol and his anger. If people wronged him. He would write it, put everything down on paper. And then he said he would just put it right back in his uh, drawer, in his cabinet, and put it away, and then wait a day or two. Yeah. And he says almost all the time, he would never send that letter, and just you know tear it up, and that was it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that, that's Putin in a way. You know, I, I'm sure he's human, and he has the impulse, and he sees his country's attacked. And he's probably saying, I've got all of these missiles and all this might, and I could get, you know, I could deal with Ukraine in a matter of hours. But let me put those emotions into the drawer, into the dresser drawer. And, yeah. You know, let's, let's Which reminds it. me of the process um, between 2014 and the start of this war, or the escalation of this war, because it really started in 2014 with the Ukraine attacking the breakaway regions. But how measured and controlled and patient the Russians were, saying, "Okay, let, let's work this out with the um, Minsk one. Okay, let's do Minsk two. Okay, what about a security? What about a treaty? Let's have a security conference. Let's work this out peacefully. Let's work this out peacefully. Let's work this out peacefully." So I imagine it will be the same pattern. But I so want this to end. I so want this to end. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I agree. Everyone wants this wants this to end. But um, you know, these guys. It, it, yeah, on both sides, on all sides, from the U.S. to China to to India and Russia and Turkey, whatever, all these countries, you know, all these leaders, 
they're, they're, they're privy to information that we just don't have. Yeah. And so they probably see things very differently as to timelines and, and how this is going to play out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I can think of no better way than keep, to keep up to date with what's going on is by checking in with your three channels. And then people should also become members of locals.duran.com and stuff. And then they can interact with other people through the forums that you have there and stuff. Alex, is there anything else you want to say before we finish up? Um, just uh, thank you very much once again for having me on. You're always and, welcome. Uh, thank you. And um, that's it. I don't have anything else. I'm a pretty, you know, I'm a pretty quiet guy. So I mean, I don't have anything else. I, I listen more than I talk. So. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you'll probably, you've probably got another half a dozen videos to edit and upload. <laughs> yeah, tonight, tonight um, I'm, I'm going to go grab some food and I'm calling it an evening. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, really, really great. And uh, you and I will have a date in London. Okay. And maybe you, me and Alex, I'll travel up because I'm not actually in London, but. I'll travel up. That would be you. that would be awesome. That would be I awesome. Some, I know some great curry houses in London. If you let's okay. do it, <laughs> let's right. do it, <laughs> Alex. Thank you so much. If thank you have any you. comments or questions, put them in the link below. Anything you want to know, go subscribe to their channels. And between now and it's between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with some really smart analysis. Go watch the Duran channels. All the best. Bye bye.